Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jared Brasher, and first and foremost, I just wanna thank you for clicking on this video. Um, if you're here right now and it's been uploaded recently, there's a good chance that you've never seen my face before. That's because this is the first CG content that I am ever putting out. Um, but that's the, kind of the direction that I want my content to move in since it is my profession. And so uh, just thank you if you're watching this video. It is one of, uh, one of my first, if not the first, that I'm putting out on this subject. What I want to do today is talk about third-party render engines from kind of a top-down view. And I'm going to do a little demo to show you exactly how in my workflow I am figuring out what the best third-party render engine for me is. There's a lot of videos out there talking about what's the best render engine, what's the fastest render engine, uh, what looks the most realistic, all kinds of things like that. Um, and generally, the consensus always comes to that it completely depends on the individual's use case. And I wanted to kind of take that a step further and try to explain how I personally am going about narrowing down uh, my like options on a render engine based on my specific use case and how you can too, no matter if our use cases are the exact same or worlds apart. So I do a lot of product advertisement work in Cinema 4D. Um, my primary engine for the last six months or so has been Redshift, but I'm also well experienced in Octane and Cycles 4D. So those are the three that I'm going to be comparing today. Um, and like I said, I just want to go through how I'm about to go about changing my workflow so that I ultimately find what fits me best and what, what works best. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go on the computer and I'm gonna build a scene in uh, all three render engines and you can do it in whatever render engine you want. I'm gonna build a scene that fits my exact use case. And so you will obviously build a scene that fits your exact use case. And uh, I'm gonna build the same scene in uh, Redshift, Octane, and Cycles, like I explained. And so then what that'll allow me to do is go through a lot of the normal testing and take something that is for my specific, you know, narrow window of things that I work on and find what is ultimately, what ultimately looks best, what's fastest, um, what I can, you know, what I feel best working in. And that'll be uh, directly translatable to what you do. So let's jump on the computer and I will go about building all of those scenes. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D. And basically, like I said in the intro, what I'm gonna be doing here is building a file that is very specific to my particular use cases. So I do pretty uh, lightweight, like need to be rendered fast, um, but still, you know, look good in high quality animations. Um, so my scene in particular is gonna consist of like some, uh, like some, volumetrics, uh, maybe some VDB type stuff, some high res models, obviously high quality textures. Um, it won't be anything, you know, insane by any means whatsoever, but uh, that's just, that's my everyday use case. So that's what I'm going to build this file around um, so that I'm not, uh, you know, putting unnecessary amounts of stress on anything or testing things that are outside of my general use parameters. Uh, so I'm gonna start in Redshift and uh, I will build that scene here. I'm gonna just fly through that. If you you know wanna learn anything about how to build the scene, I'd be happy to do another video on it, but that's not really the focus of this. So I'm just gonna build the scene and then convert it for both Octane and Cycles and uh, then we will pick back up there with, you know, the steps to take after that. Okay, uh, so here I am in my Redshift scene. I just kind of want to show you, obviously, this is going to be very custom to your everyday use case, uh, but I did just want to show you kind of what I included in my scene and how, um, how this is kind of set up for what I do. So this is obviously, you know, it's such a random assortment of, 
of things. It's not necessarily a production case, but as far as the technical strain that's put on my system, this is a lot of the stuff that I would use in an everyday uh, scene. So I have just some, there's some low poly, you know, mega scans assets here. The rocks are fairly high poly in a matrix uh, scatter on the ground. Uh, I have a uh, fairly high poly model in, as my subject here. Obviously some volumetrics, um, redshift environment going on, lit by a combination of uh, this like 50% power HDRI. Um, I've got a spotlight shining down here that has a, a grayscale gorilla gobo on it. Uh, then we have the two area lights. So there's just a lot, there's a lot going on. It's not necessarily an overly complicated scene. Um, there's also obviously some bloom effects going on. Um, there's this like transparent, uh, plane that's here in front of this one that's emitting light. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of like just different things going on. And so this is the kind of thing that I would take and animate and just kind of use for various advertising purposes for uh, this client or, you know, whoever else. So uh, this is like, this is where my brain goes as far as setting this test up and how yours should as well. Just as many elements as you can have of something that you use consistently, uh, the more the better. Um, again, not really trying to just throw all the strain you can at your system, but really trying to create an everyday uh, scenario and take it and do some testing with it. So now I'm gonna take this same scene and optimize it for octane and cycles. And then I will uh, meet you guys back here to run some tests and show you how I'm gonna go about that. And we'll figure all this out. Okay, so I am finishing uh, creating the last scene at the moment. Um, this is the cycle scene. This one I expect to kind of, you know, run the slowest possibly. Um, but yeah, this one should be done. Uh, so now we're back in the Redshift project, and what I'm basically going to do now is kind of run some tests. So I'm just going to see how I can tweak the settings to sort of fit my daily workload and, you know, try to move towards some render times that I like. Um, so starting with Redshift, what I'm going to do is I will uh, switch over to the advanced tab really quick and I'm gonna initially take my progressive passes down to 256. Um, I don't want any denoising globals. I'm gonna take all of these to eight. Uh, Aces, OCIO. Um, that was actually something that I did to my Octane kernel when I went into that. So if I need to do a video on how to get the Aces color space in Octane, I can certainly do that. Uh, all of this I'm good with. I don't really need a ton of... Um, don't really need a ton of change in here. The main thing is just making sure hardware ray tracing is on. Uh, and then I'm just gonna save this as a PNG and I'm gonna do this for all of them. 16-bit uh, PNG will go, I needed to go here. Uh, just the um, folder that all this lives in. Uh, images and then redshift. So, and then I'm going to start my first render and we'll see, see what the result is as far as how long this takes. So the way that I'm doing this, I'm doing uh, two frames and 
one of those is what I consider to be a perfect frame. So that would be me rendering a still for a uh, graphic or just a preview or something. Um, and so that's gonna be a noiseless image, a perfect, you know, something that I'm okay with letting go for a little longer. Uh, and then I'm doing a, what I consider a usable image. So something that if I'm doing an animation, uh, I can let render on another PC and have it not take an incredible amount of time. Um, and so that's something that I can take into like After Effects with neat video and clean up and do my own stuff too. Um, and so for Redshift, those times were uh, four minutes and 30 seconds on the uh, perfect frame and then a uh, minute 59 seconds on the on what I consider a usable frame and that was uh, just my hardware info is uh, I had a 3080 Ti and a 3070 Ti working together um, so not bad times at all I'm about to uh, run the same kind of frame tests for both of the other engines and I will meet you back here to kind of just wrap up, not really that the results, the results don't really mean much here, um, given that you're supposed to be running this test yourself for your use case, um, but just for anybody curious, I'll just wrap up. So after uh, quite the number of tests and settings changes and just all kinds of stuff with those three uh, render engines, um, my final numbers came out to be Redshift at uh, 4 minutes and 30 seconds for a perfect frame and 1 minutes and 59 seconds for a uh, usable frame. Octane was 7 minutes and 15 seconds for a perfect frame, 4 minutes and 9 seconds for a usable frame. Uh, cycles, 10 minutes and 40 seconds for a perfect frame, 5 minutes, 59 seconds for a usable frame. That uh, surprised me a little bit because last I did this test, Octane was fastest. Um, I think it was likely just the difference in volumetrics that caused such a big discrepancy between the two because I usually can't see a huge difference between Redshift and Octane, certainly not like this. Um, I, I think that Redshift is going to stay my main render engine. I enjoy using it the most. I think I understand it uh, and its tendencies the deepest. Um, but uh, I like to run this test every now and then and occasionally I'll throw in Arnold or V-Ray or something. Those are obviously uh, much more CPU heavy, so I'm not really getting the full use of my hardware out of them. So I love the image that Arnold produces, but uh, it's not really viable for me to use in a studio or a professional sense. Um, but running this test is good. And I hope that uh, you were able to kind of learn something about how to do this on your own for your own workflow and just take, take what you do and find what's best because it's going to be different for everybody. Um, like I said, if I if I hadn't used volumetrics there, I think that Octane and Redshift are probably hand in hand. Um, those are also the two that you can use Aces in. Uh, Aces ships with Redshift natively, and you can install it in uh, Octane, which I will likely do a video on at some point. But running this test is good. I, uh, I appreciate you watching the video if you've made it this far. Again, thank you. This is my first kind of CG based video. Um, I know it's not, it's not perfect, but I'll get better as I go. Um, so leave a like if you enjoyed the video and comment any constructive criticism you might have. Uh, but until then, enjoy finding the best render engine for your work.